Right, this is my new powder coat oven. What are you doing? Hi. You want to be in the video? <laughs> it is just a normal filing cabinet. Nothing special about it. And all I've done inside... <laughs> Get out of there, you. you got all ice cream on your face. No. All I've done, got some really thin box section. And I'm going to sit the glass into that recess there. That box section is 20 mil. 3 mil plate around the front. And then inside, where this little cheeky guy is, this side, all I did is took it off, put insulation behind it, as you can see in the holes, that's insulation, what you put in your loft, rock wool. I made a back sheet there, and then, because this back sheet was a bit flimsy, I've just put a bit of box section, and then this base is the shelf, what was inside the cabinet, and then in the top, that was also a shelf in here, so it cost literally nothing, and all I've done is just got a 3mm piece of plate around the front. And then what we're going to use for the heating element is this old cooker, which all works. Can you turn it on? Well, we found in a skip. Yeah, we found that in a skip. So we're going to use that heating element there and put that into the base of that Hi. cabinet. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. Okay. Once we've stripped the cooker. Right, that's the back off the oven. That's the fan there. I've undone these screws here and there and then that just lifts off and then the wires that go to the hot plates I've just cut them and the F. so I'm left with all them I don't need any of them just take that top off for us so that's what you're left with you don't need any of these none of them whatsoever all you need is this control and this control but you could actually get rid of that controller but if you not don't know anything about wiring like me I won't bother that's for the light in the oven and these here if you look there that's an insulated conductor there that's for the um, heating element and it's really hot that and that's another light right back in a minute once I've got it stripped two seconds right I've got the back off I've disconnected the fan this is what you're left with the earth went to that there this earth went to the fan. We don't need them because we're not going to be using it. And then just remember to mark everything. Lights. Remember where it went even if you might not need it. Look, fan. Even though, because I, I might decide to use it. And then there's your heating elements. One, two. That's for the grill. One, two. That's your thermostat. I've took the gauge out from the front. Right, this is the thermostat. This was put into that little hole in there and was in the cooker. Really important that you don't mess with the wire on that as much as you can. So what I've done is I've undone this bot, this um, screw. I've undone this screw so I can push that out without actually having to pull it apart. So now, literally, that is all the controls loose. But that's all the controls. And there is the heating element. That's for the grill. And then this one is for, and then this one is for the fan oven, and they're 2,000 watt each. So they'll be going to the base of that. Right, this is how you wire up a thermostat off a cooker. Off your thermostat gauge, that is also got the relay in it, which sends power from there. I've just done a rough wiring to one side of the element, yeah, which will be your lav. The neutral, I've run straight back into the fuse board, so the neutral is permanently neutral. The air is obviously permanently there, which is this. So just, just so you understand, the neutral is always wired to the neutral, yeah? The lav is wired into the switch, and then... The other side of the switch is wired straight into your fuse board. What I will do, I will wire a switch in here, probably a light switch out of a house, so I've got control over it, because you couldn't leave it like this. And it goes straight to your element. Your, heating, your heater, your element, I've had that in a cup of warm water, and it does, when you turn that at 100 degrees, if you listen, did you hear it come on, but I turned it a little bit. Watch. 
so it's 50 degrees above because I have had it in a cup of hot water and that thermostat is still red hot. So that's how you do that. Right, I've siliconed all the joints inside. And this is the silver tape that I'm going to stick over these little vent holes. I've siliconed it all the way around. And I use this. It goes up to 300 degrees and it's from screw fix. Now I need to put all that in and then that'll be done. Quite then. Right, we're back. I've painted the cabinet. What I did, I made a frame and then a box and then another frame. And then there's two sheets of glass there. I made these here to shut it with. Not the most professional thing, but it works. There's a sheet of glass here, which I laid into this frame. Then I made a frame out of box section. In between there, I put a big thick bead of mastic, which keeps the two sheets of glass away from each other. This is just a normal seal off a cooker. I've put mastic along the edge of it. It looks a bit ugly, but it, it holds it to it. So when you wiggle it, it keeps it in place. And I just painted it. The rest, that's just a bolt welded to there. And then that's just a bolt and that just goes on there, hooks on. And then what you do is when the oven's like that, you twist that and it pulls the door closed. I can show you. Obviously I wouldn't, I'd have it a bit tighter before I started, but yeah, you can see how it works. Inside I put my thermometer at the top with my sealer just to hold it in place. That goes, that goes through the back up into the control box, which I showed you how to wire up earlier in the video. I've used the timer, the selector now, this one here what I've put Tipex on, and then the timer works there, if you listen. So you can hear that. Okay, let's test it. I run it up yesterday and it takes about 15 minutes to get to 180 and as you remember there shelves that's the shelf one of the shelves that's the shelf and then the shelf in the top and i have got a trusty heat gun so i'll just show you oh I'll tell you what i'll do turn it on first turn it on as you can see it's glowing this one you can't see but it is glowing but that one is overload and it goes to about uh, 500 oh there you go 400 450 and this one's the same so when you shut that door also a double seal one to the it really gets hot quick So, there you go, that's how to make a powder coat oven, you see it glowing through there, look. So, that's how you make a powder coat oven at home. I've spent, the glass was £25 a sheet, so that's £50. Hinges, uh, there was two quid each, I think. Um, the insulation was £20, so it's at £50, £70, £80. The old cooker I got for free off uh, Scrapman. And then the paint, these cheap tins of paint from the local pound, pound shop. So yeah, more than happy with that. The only thing I think it could do with, the only thing is it could do with a light on top of there, just so you know when the oven's on. But apart from that, pretty happy with it. It's a good size. Probably pay about two grand for one of them. See you later guys, bye.